Well, hello there. Well, you can see it's snowing and that means it's cold. And I have a problem. I'm gonna show you that right over here. My furnace is busted. And we're gonna fix that today on Data Yourself. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about safety. When working with a natural gas or a high voltage electrical appliance, be sure you're comfortable with what you're doing. If you're not, hire a licensed professional. Okay, before we get started, I wanna show you, I do have a gas insert fireplace, so we are not without heat. It does a really good job keeping this warm, warm and into the kitchen, but it doesn't do a very good job heating our upstairs. So I need to get that furnace fixed. All right, so I have the furnace open, and just to give you a heads up, this furnace will not operate with the doors off. It has this little safety switch right here. Okay, so the gas is on, and I have turned on the breaker over there, but I have not turned on the thermostat. Let's go turn that on real quick. We are in heat mode. I'm gonna turn this up a little. Make sure it's running. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the furnace so we can see what it is doing and isn't doing. I'm going to use this little squeeze clamp right here to hold that switch down. Let's see if I can get it on there. Looks like it's working. Okay, so here we go. Fan kicks on. Now you're going to see the igniter start down here any second now and then what's supposed to happen at that point is the gas valve is supposed to open and the igniter will ignite the gas and this thing will fire off there's the igniter but no gas And I don't know if you heard the click, but it cycled. And now the igniter turns off. It's gonna do that three more times and it's gonna to go to a lockout. And then right here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little red LED. It's hard to see with the light. But when it goes through the three cycles, it's gonna start blinking. So it's in its third cycle now. And let's wait till it goes into lockout. There it goes, I heard it click. And it goes off, and as you can see, the light is blinking. One, one, one. If it was giving me a different code like two, three, four, five, it would be blinking in fast successions. Well, I look down at my manual right here for one flash, and the first step is locate and correct a gas interruption. Well, I disconnected this and I checked, I do have gas here. All right, so what do I think? I think I have a bad gas valve and I'll tell you why. Okay, so how do I think I know I have a bad gas valve? Two reasons. As many of you may or may not know, I was in the Navy and I fixed airplanes for 21 years. So I'm kind of familiar with how valves work. I was in that HVAC systems in aircraft. So pneumatic valves, hydraulic valves, fire suppression systems, auction systems. I'm pretty familiar with this kind of stuff. Uh, the second reason I know this is bad, I actually had a technician come out and take a look at it. And he did all the wires, checked the boards and everything and did verify that this valve is bad. Well, the problem with that is, is he couldn't get the valve for at least three to four more days. And then I would have to schedule a service appointment after that valve arrived at their work center. So that could be another week, week and a half, and he said it was gonna cost me upwards of $800 for parts and materials to come repair this. So after the technician left, I jumped on Amazon and I found this exact valve. Part number's right on top. This is a Honeywell valve. Even though this is a Goodman furnace, it's a pretty standard thing. So this is a Honeywell valve, two-stage gas valve. So I need to take this valve out, and as you can see, it's probably not that easy because I can't just rotate the valve because the fan's in the way. So this gas valve go, or line goes out here and it goes to this T with this drip leg. So what I'm gonna have to do is disconnect here, spin this pipe out of there, then take this 
and those screws off, pull this assembly out, swap the valve on the burner assembly, put it back in, and then reconnect this pipe. So let's get started on that by first, let's shut the valve off. Gas is off now, perpendicular to the line, and we're gonna go turn off the breaker. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. Number 16. There it is. Oh, something's turning. There it goes. So now that I have the main gas line disconnected, as you can see there, this is what's holding this valve in place. And really what it is, is just these four Phillips head screws, but this is going to have to come off this wire bundle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of this and then I'm going to disconnect those uh, zip ties and we'll take those four screws out and we'll get this valve out. Well, that's not the right valve. Okay, crisis averted. As you can clearly see, these are different valves. They're generally the same size, which isn't a big deal. Um, just configured a little different. Well, there was this little note in here that pretty much tells me, hey, the valve I ordered that goes with my furnace has been discontinued, and the valve they sent me is an OEM replacement. So as you can see right there, 151M0027SK. It's right there, if it'll focus, right there. And it's a replacement for that 151M0028, which is up on top here, upside down, of course, but you get the idea. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this valve off of the burner assembly, put this valve on, and what I did over here is I just did a little mark just so I could see where like 90 degrees is or whatever the angle needs to be. It probably doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna get it as close as we can. How am I gonna do this now? Let's push this and pull this. That didn't work. I wish I had a vise. Unfortunately, I don't have a vise. So, let me think here. This is, that's tightening, okay. Let's try it the other way, this way. Okay, let me think about this for a second. I've got this thing clamped down pretty good. And what I need to do is push down on this so that gets tight or loosens up this way. Let's see how that works. Okay, try number two. Got a big old C-clamp on here now. Let's see how that works. All right, broke that free. Okay, so I've got this special, here it is, this special uh, Teflon tape that's for gas. And it says it right on here. It's for kerosene, natural gas, propane, not to exceed 100 PSI. Well, my house is not 100 PSI, so I don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't have the... the uh, the dope they use on gas, because I don't do that many gas appliances, usually just a dryer or a stove every once in a while. So we'll go ahead and wrap that on here, making sure we wrap it in the right direction so that it pulls it 
across the threads as it's tightening, not over the threads. There he is. Okay, let's go ahead and put it in the valve. So I got my little mark on there, and I'm going to go ahead and hand tighten this as best I can. And then if I have to take it back to the bench and crank it the rest of the way, I will. That's it. I'll check those lines and we'll be good to go. So my camera froze while I was doing the installation and it was a little tough getting these lined up and then I actually put them in these holes first and I realized they were in the wrong place so I had to reinstall it. Uh, I got the zip ties so that wire bundle is all back in place now and obviously this is the connector that came with the other valve. It doesn't fit in there but they got me that. But before we do that, I have got to get this one reinstalled now. So let's get that plug out of there, get that thread wrapped up, and get this tightened up. This should be pretty easy. Okay, everything's in there. Gas valves pseudo level. Got a good connection here, straight up and down here. Got the gas on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leak check. Leak check here, here, these two connections here, and this one here. I can't leak check this one um, because obviously the valve's not in the open position. So we will uh, check that. Hopefully it's not leaking because when this fire starts, I could probably blow myself up. But let's uh, go ahead and uh, get some soapy water, check those leaks once we open the gas before we turn on the power. I don't see any bubbles there. I don't see any bubbles here. I'll clean those off. Now this one over here, I just saw a bubble, but I don't think it was a bubble from a leak. I think it was just a bubble for me spraying on the soap. So let's try that one more time. Make sure we don't have a, a leak there because that would be bad. see any bubbles. Well, that's a good sign. Okay. And then this one over here, I'm pretty confident that one's okay, but I'm going to put a little stuff on there right away. And then when we fire this thing up, if it's leaking, it'll bubble. Okay, everything looks clean. Let's turn on the power. Okay, the fan's on. Let's see what happens. There's the igniter. Come on, guys. Valve is on. I heard something click. That's not a good sign. One more time. There it 
goes. All right. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Let's get this thing buttoned up and get this house warmed up. And just as a point, no error code. All right, so let's give it a test. Go ahead and turn on the heat. Turn it up a little, just so it turns on. Let's go up to the garage. I hear it spooling up. We're gonna look in the little window down here. I don't know if you guys can see in there. So I think it took a little while to get started the last time because of the air in the line. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you guys can really focus on that, but that's the igniter. And we should have flame any second now. Click, click, click. There it is. It's got a little yellow in it. I think that's just because there's probably still a little air in the line, but there it goes. Yeah, nice and blue now. And any minute now, once the coil heats up, the fan should turn on and we should have nice warm air in our house again. Okay, and, oh, I definitely have warm air coming out of there. Oh, nice. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit that bell for notifications. If I've done anything in this video that you found helpful, consider giving me a super thanks for becoming a channel member. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. My subscribe button is right here. Thanks for watching. Doubt it yourself.